Hello guys, welcome back to the channel to today's review where I'm gonna feature this watch from the brand Megir. I guess that's how you would say it, Megir, M-E-G-I-R. Uh, this is a brand that I haven't featured before. It is a Chinese online retail brand. I think they do have some of their own uh, websites actually listings but uh, it looks like most of the retail is through uh, you know, those online massive retailers uh, and this one again courtesy of Gearbest who has made this particular watch uh, available uh, so thank you again to them links to descriptions and uh, purchasing sites all below um, guys this is the Megia 3002 I call this the Megia Big Bang because uh, you know come on there is no doubt uh, where they have copied this design from you know and this particular model uh, the, the model that it copies from is the Hublot Big Bang Gold Ceramic 44 millimeter so that that's really uh, the precise model that I managed to find that that looks almost exactly to a T uh, to this particular watch so this one available at 52 USD from Gearbest but again often you're going to get discount coupons 30% off even higher than that at times so keep a look out for that I'll put coupon codes uh, that I can find below uh, hopefully they'll still be uh, uh, valid uh, by the time you watch this video so you know the, the official name that they list on their website it says date function water resistant Japan quartz watch with silicon band so it kind of just describes it um, so going into the details here this uh, case is 46 millimeters across on the bezel so it's pretty big uh, and if you look at the black bits here and the side that is actually 52 millimeters so it is actually a pretty massive watch um, it's got a compound case which is really the same as what the Hublot has uh, so meaning looks like there's a whole bunch of different materials that makes up the case the case is 16 millimeters on the thickness there and the lugs which are kind of hidden are 24 millimeter wide uh, if you measure that length there, I guess you might call that a lug to lug, even though it's kind of hidden lugs. That's 56 millimeters on the length there. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a massive watch. But weight wise, you know, with the quartz movement, with the silicon band, uh, it is actually only 122 grams. So it is actually very light on the wrist. Uh, now, the actual Hublot uh, is, of course, going to be upmarket materials, right? That they actually use 18 karat gold. Uh, and they use a black ceramic for the bezel and I, I, I'm pretty sure or at least I assume that this part on the blue would also be black ceramic but this, this one has no such materials like that this is I assume some sort of uh, base metal alloy uh, this feels like plastic actually and this top feels like PVD metal of some form but they don't actually tell you what exactly it's made of uh, now the case back let me just open the buckle here All right just take a look at that Okay, so it looks like there's a bit of a screw there, but I'm pretty sure there's a false uh, screw, right? There's actually a tab here for you to lift off the case back if you want to open it. I'm not going to try to do that, uh, but you know, I'm pretty sure that's a false uh, push-in uh, case back that make it look like a screw in, but it's actually not. The crown is not screw in, right? It's just a push crown and they've rated this at 30 meters water rating. Now getting onto the dial here is perhaps some of the more interesting features. It's a black textured dial and if you look at the finishing, hopefully it comes through. There's, there's this kind of mini pyramidal shapes, right? The little squares and that kind of looks like Clou de Paris, but most Clou de Paris and higher end are a lot finer squares. This one actually kind of large squares here. I think it may be trying to imitate carbon fiber. Who knows? I think the Hublot actually is supposed to imitate carbon fiber. This one looks more like a, a kind of a Clou de Paris uh, to me. Uh, now the, the sub dials at 3, 6 and 9. Um, it's probably going to be very difficult for me to show this, but do, they do have a concentric circular patterning on them, the, the Azurage type of patterning. Uh, the, the markers all around are applied in gold tone uh, that you can see there uh, and it's got pretty basic loom the looms are on all the hands so the, the hour and minute hand in the central and then the three chronograph uh, kind of sub dial hands not not the second hand though so I'll put up a loom shot here for you to kind of see how it looks like in the dark uh, pretty basic it doesn't really last very long at all it's, it's kind of what you expect from these brands or what, what I've kind of come to expect um, the bezel, uh, again, you know, a black PVD steel of some form, they do have some texture 
right? This kind of lists horizontal brushing uh, pattern or vertical, I suppose, vertical brushing uh, pattern. And they've got this decoration of these screws, which are kind of the Hublot H screws. And I think they've done a fair job because you can see the screws are all in different orientation, which suggests to me that they are all separately inserted individually, you know, like the, you know, I guess like the real thing uh, that it's trying to copy. Um, the, the, the real Hublot, again, you know, real black ceramic and the screws are titanium. These screws almost certainly aren't titanium. The crystal, they, they call it Hartlex, so it's a fat, flat configuration Hartlex crystal. Movement, uh, of course, you can tell it's quartz, right? Looking at the movement of the central uh, seconds there, quartz analog. Um, 24 hour subdial at the three o'clock position. So that, that's just a 24 hour subdial. It's not part of the chronograph. And then the chronograph uh, is a bit weird. You know, it's got a second counter at six. So if I start the timer, uh, so it's partly blocked here. Let's just get that out of the way. You can see, uh, right, the six o'clock dial is the seconds and then the nine o'clock dial is actually the minutes. There's no hour uh, register. Right, stop and just reset the chronograph so that that's that's what you have in terms of the uh, chronograph uh, configuration uh, the strap is a kind of a silicon rubber pretty basic pretty stiff actually i have to say it's not uh, by any means of high quality that i would uh, uh, kind of uh, you know feel that you could feel uh, is more supple and soft this is actually pretty stiff silicon uh, the buckle is a pressed metal release that you can see there Basic push button release uh, with folding on top uh, with a gold tone, of course. So, you know, that's really the description of the watch. Uh, what, you know, are the, the strengths? What have I enjoyed about this? Well, it's a pretty good looker, right? It, it really is quite an attractive design that they've chosen to ape here. You know, look at that black and gold there, you know, black and gold all over. Black and gold, of course, is, is naturally a, a pretty attractive high contrast combination. So it, it kind of borrows all that and as an homage well you know as a as a skin deep uh, homage it's a pretty fair execution right it doesn't have any obvious holes uh, at a glance but if you look closely there are QC issues so the weaknesses well the, the hands are not aligned if you look at uh, uh, the chronograph seconds right it's not exactly at 12 o'clock even the chronograph minutes is not exactly at 12 o'clock there are misalignments uh, in the, the actual uh, movement here. The rubber is poor, I've said, uh, and then this is, you know, this is pretty, pretty basic as well. You know, you can just grab, you know, that with your bare hands and bend it all out of shape. This is really quite basic metal. Uh, you know, before I move on uh, with the rest of the weaknesses, let's just put it on for a quick shot of this massive watch, you know, this 44 millimeter across on the bezel and even bigger on the actual case size there on my 17 centimeter wrist right it's just uh absolutely too large for me uh, you're gonna have to have a, a much bigger wrist than me to carry this off without it looking way too large so that that's just my view of it all right what else uh i've got to say about this well i i think the chronograph placement is weird right uh, it's a quartz movement, so why not choose a uh, module that gives you central chronograph seconds, perhaps a small seconds for the actual time, and then give us a minute and hour uh, register rather than a 24 hour subdial, which personally I, I don't find that useful. So you know that they've, they've chosen this module. You can easily make a quartz module change, uh, you know, in my understanding. So why not do it like the real thing? It's just, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure why. They've kind of cut that particular uh, cost there, if, if indeed it is a cost cut. So, you know, overall, it, it is a blatant homage. So if you don't like homage watches, if you don't want to be seen as wearing something that copies something else, uh, this is definitely not for you. Um, and this is probably fairly recognizable. I, I don't know. I, I'm a watch guy, so I can easily recognize this as a Hublot. Maybe most people won't. So maybe it's not that bad a brand to choose to homage, but you know, to me, uh, this is very definitely an Hublot homage. So guys, there you have it. The Mega 3002 uh, with quartz movement and silicon band. Let me know what you think of this watch and what you think of this brand. If you have any uh, kind of experiences of Mega, 
Uh, guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. I'm putting out new content weekly, of course, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me, and as always, I will catch you next time.